Hi, and welcome to another episode of Inspiring Business. My name is Mark Bullock. I'm the co-founder of phoneblogger.net, videosocials.net, and video interview podcast services, where we facilitate marketing services and systems for professional service firms, including attorneys, financial professionals, coaches, and consultants. Every episode, I interview business thought leaders who make a difference in the world through their services, their products, or their ideas. You can find the show on YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and more. Today, I'm excited to have my guest and a longtime client, in fact, Rhonda Bowen, who is a communication guide who facilitates communication across cultures and is also the founder of Bells and the chief steward of Compolium. Hi, Rhonda. How are you? It's great to have you. Hi, Mark. Well, all those wonderful things you said already. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> You're very welcome. But I don't I don't know that our audience necessarily knows what Compolium is. What what is Compolium? Okay, well, let's start with Compolium. That's the easiest part first, I think. That was okay. a great choice. Um, Compolium is my personal network on a system called Mighty Networks. Many people say it's a, a private version of Facebook, meaning I pay to have a mighty network. And that means everybody who joins our network has the opportunity to come in, to interact with others, as most people know about uh, from Facebook, for example. But there's no advertising. There's no spam. There's no anything like that because I'm taking care of that by paying for the platform. And the platform has a number of opportunities. You can join just as a member where you come in and you see all of the general things that are happening, but there are individual groups that meet. Also, some of those are open for everyone and some of them are closed based on being part of a program that I run. So if you'd like to come, you join through the link and then you can go in and see the groups. I call them tables. And the reason I do that is compolium is a word that doesn't exist anywhere else. It's my own term. It's a mixture of calm, which you can imagine is for communication, which is my passion, but also community, which is what this is. And the polium part comes from a thing called a thermopolium. In ancient Rome, if you were going to another city like Pompeii, for example, and you'd never been there before, you have the opportunity to go to a thermopolium. A thermopolium has a place where there's like a bar, and there are places, amphors, that are holding warm food. And if you are traveling and don't know where you need to go and what's going on and you need something to eat, this was the original sort of fast food restaurant, if oh, you will. Okay. So what I've done is say that Compolium is the food for thought place, like a Thermopolium was for real food and for travelers. We do this now online, and Compolium is our place to get food for thought, to exchange with others and to have opportunities to meet in groups and to talk about things that are important for us in communication. Wow. So that that's uh, that seems involved and at the same token very, very interesting because you're you're kind of setting up your own network, your own social media network, but it's a kind of a more of a private um, kind of club, which is it I'm assuming is revolves around business communications. Yes. Um, when, I, when I say that I'm the chief steward, um, I believe in the fact that when we work together on things that are so difficult, like communication, and all of us know that people think communication is like breathing or like walking. We do it all the time, so it's easy. Well, we do it all the time, but it's not always easy. And so <laughs> the people I work with, I call best professionals. Best professionals are people in business, engineering, science, and technology. And you may say, well, why, why those people? Well, they're because they're exactly the opposite of what I am. I am none of those things. And that's why it's easy for me to help those people with communication because they can all code in IT or they can write um, dossiers of a thousand pages from some kind of a study. I have no idea how to do any of those things but if they're speaking to someone outside their own system, meaning if they're speaking to somebody from a government agency, or they're speaking like a doctor speaks to a patient, many times that communication doesn't work because 
people are so used to being in their own expertise, in their own jargon, in their own way of expressing things. When they're with peers, it's wonderful. When they're with all the rest of us, <laughs> it's not always so easy. And I'm the person that's helping people bridge that gap. How do you speak to people who are not at the same level of expertise as you are, or as Denzel Washington said it in the film Philadelphia, speak to me like I'm a two-year-old? How do you make sure that people who are not in your field still understand what's important for you to get across to them? And how do you understand the questions they have for you if you're not used to listening to people who think like that? So it's both ways. It's both expressing what you want to say, but it's also making sure you understand what other people are trying to get from you. Absolutely. And in my world, I, I think I see that we serve a lot of attorneys uh, as, have a lot of attorneys as clients and, you know, there's lawyer speak, right? Um, it, but you could, you could take any, you could take any industry and it's like, once you're so immersed in that particular industry, you develop acronyms and you develop, you know, euphemisms and you do, and you do, and you develop its own language really. Yeah. Um, and so being able to um, translate um, that language uh, into what, whatever your audience that you're trying that you're trying to have a conversation with so it sounds like that is your primary focus for bell which is bell communications um and but there's also another um entity uh that uh before we got on to this uh call i had never heard of before which is whisperation and what is whisperation well, see, that's why you come and talk to me because I make up all these words that nobody knows. And so that if you're if you're a, the word person like I am, bilingual and you know having done language all my life, then then things like whisperation are really important to me because there are many words in the English language and in other languages that talk about something, but sometimes you need to combine things. Like compolium is this community plus the thermal polium for food for thought. Whisperation is the combination of wisdom and inspiration. And you may think, well, those are two totally different things. And yes, they are. But the magic happens when you put those things together. So wisdom, when I'm speaking to one person, as you and I are today, or if I'm running and facilitating an entire group, everybody comes to the room either bringing wisdom that they would like to share with other people or looking for wisdom because there's something they don't know about yet and they need wisdom from someone else. Notice I'm saying wisdom, not information, go to Google, not knowledge, go to Google. If you want wisdom, you have to be in the room with somebody who's had an experience and is able to explain that to you and what that could mean, not only for their lives, but also for yours and how you make the gap from what's happening now to what you would like to be happening and how wisdom can help you with that. So once you've given wisdom or you received wisdom or hopefully some of both, then you should be inspired. That should make you light up. That should make you want to do something that you wouldn't have thought of before because you didn't have the wisdom for that yet. And once you have the inspiration, then I take it the next step and my tagline is whisperation in action. So don't just sit there and say, oh, that's nice, or I never heard of that before. That's great. But what does it get you to do? And what steps are you going to take now? What are you going to actually go out and do with what you got out of this conversation? And how is that going to improve your life or the lives of your team or your colleagues or your clients or whoever you're speaking with where you need to have some kind of an improvement? So whisperation in action is my new motto for my life to make sure that people get the wisdom they need, are inspired to do something, and then actually get a chance to put it into action. Really fantastic. Um, and I'm just looking at it from a parallels in what I did and, and my partner, Vikram Rajan, did in creating video socials because we had spent year, you know, a lifetime of experience um, and then uh, we had created uh, practice marketing and practice marketing was basically an advisory service for professional service firms uh, in using content, even before it was called content marketing, using educating and informing uh, as a means of marketing uh, through, word, through word of mouth. 
And uh, we had uh, created phoneblogger.net um, more than more than a decade ago um, in in for the written word. And what we found was that most of our clients, whether they be a good writer or not, would spend hours and hours putting together information into into a three to five minute to read. You, we call it a blog post or an article, a short short form article that was educational and informational for their audience. Um, but in in doing so, that was. Um, a huge waste of time. So we we developed a system or process or we were inspired to in having the wisdom of doing it ourselves and having the wisdom of experience of trying to, to help guide them through that process that, gee, if we had somebody else involved, an editor, to call them, interview them on the phone for a few minutes, record record that conversation, and then edit that into... A, an actual article. So it is the client's inspired words um, that are uh, ultimately become that article, but they don't have to worry about the QA and the sentence structure and the, and, and, uh, the grammar and, um, and, and then getting it out onto the various social media platforms and in the newsletters, et cetera, et cetera. So that was, that was phone blogger uh, that we created. And then from that experience of, of, near a decade, really, um, we saw that video is just taken over in the social media space and in communications in general, because there's so much more available to us in receiving information via a video than from just text or even just or even just audio. And even with certain visuals, et cetera, et cetera, our ability to, for someone to see our facial expressions, to see our engagement with them, et cetera, it, it provides a whole new level. Um, and so then again, we took the wisdom of past experience and were inspired to create video socials. And yes, this is a little bit of a commercial for our services that I'm kind of inserting into, into the middle of this. Um, so video socials was born out of the same basic concept of how do I, how do I create videos for YouTube or for my website or for social media, et cetera, et cetera, and not have to engage a professional um, <clears throat> videography team and et cetera. Um, and oh, by the way, if I'm sitting there talking to an inanimate object by myself and I'm sitting there trying to schedule that time, to do that, you know, how much discipline am I going to have to get that done? And by the way, <clears throat> when we're having a, com a communication with air, with nobody to give us feedback mm -hmm. as to how they're receiving it, well, then we're, we're kind of in our own heads. Mm -hmm. So we created the process by which that you're a member of uh, and have been for some time, whereas we get a handful of professionals together <clears throat> from varying industries and, and, and professions, but they're all doing the same thing. And that is learning how to communicate with their audience. Um, and we act as each other's surrogate audience as we're recording our informational and educational short pieces <clears throat> for video to go out onto social media websites, et cetera, et cetera. And we give each other feedback and, and, and we have that feedback live as, as we're doing it. Um, and again, and then further from that is the, we've taken such inspiration from all of you guys doing this now for three and a half years or so, uh, and seeing the difference that it makes, uh, that we are now, uh, uh, realizing that so many people need to have a, a deeper conversation and to have an interaction rather than just a talking head. And so podcasts and now video podcasts, and then beyond that video interview podcast, as we're doing today, allows us to have a, an interactive conversation for our audiences to get more information than is available in a two or three minute, you know, you, YouTube or, or, or Facebook or LinkedIn uh, type, type, type video. So that is our video interview podcast services. And um, that's video, video interview podcast.com, by the way. So 
all of this really kind of ties back to, and thank you for, for opening the door with whisperation, but it's all from the experience, which has created a certain level of wisdom, which is a cumulative wisdom of our experience with our clients and working and working, uh, facilitating, facilitating our clients to then being inspired to create something that serves them, that helps them get to the next level. Uh, and, and, um, I'm, and that's why I created this podcast, Inspiring Business, because it is literally, once you reach that point of inspiration, now it's not just a drudgery. Now it's not just a um, something that you got to do to make a buck. Uh, it is the ability to create uh, something that makes a difference uh, for others. And I know that you being in communications and myself, I've been a student of communications for most of my professional life, is that we need to be able to learn how to listen and how to speak in such a way that we can inspire others to move forward. So where could our listeners today um, continue the conversation that we've had today, which of course is not done, but I wanted to make sure, how do people reach you? And of course, we'll have links that are associated with this video, but how do people reach you? What's wh Where do you want them to go? Well, there are a couple of things. If you're really interested in the groups, and for me, groups are the most important thing because when we talk about co-creation, when we're all together in the group and we're sitting in the room and we're discussing these things and people start having this piggyback, you know, somebody says something and that inspires somebody to say the next thing and the next thing, that's something you never get in a dialogue. That's something you only get when there are a lot of people in the room. So for people who are looking for group experiences, the best place to go is Compolium and the link that I've sent you will give people the opportunity to go in and just sign in with their name and a password and their email address, and they'll be in the middle of the platform. So they can go in and see what's going on. I will then have send them a welcome message and we can set up a time to do things. If people are more interested in, first of all, talking to me personally, I'm in the middle of going from one website to another. Life is always transition. We all know that. And we get the success that we get from doing things in a different way. So I've started working at, in this transition period with a platform called Pensite. Pensite is a place where you can go and set up a time just to speak to me at no charge, but you can also set up a time to actually sit down and go through sessions where we actually work on whatever it is that you're looking at at the moment in your communication. And there are a number of different options. So feel free to go there and choose the one that suits you and what you want to talk about best. Because, of course, if we're working one on one, there's an intensity, there's a focus, there's something that happens only in a one on one as we're having now. But when you're in the group, I talk about a success swarm. You may be familiar with swarm intelligence with mm -hmm. animals, you know, like a flock of birds or a school of fish or pick your favorite animal <laughs> that goes in a group. When birds fly in a flock, they've got the weaker and the 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 smaller ones on the inside and the bigger ones on their outside that are taking care of them and protecting them. They're all flying in a pattern. You saw those beautiful things on the internet. You can see all these birds flying around and it looks like somebody has figured this all out. No, they figure it out together. They co-create. So I don't talk about group coaching or masterminds or, you know, all the words that we all know, lots of words on the online for what that is. But I talk about a success swarm because the group has a success as a group, but each individual who doesn't get lost in the, in, this, in the process also has a success. So for me, I talk about the groups that I, that I lead as success swarms. You're learning with the group and the group is supporting everyone in the group, but individually you make progress as well. So it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking to talk to me personally first, that's fine. If you're looking to actually be part of a group there's also um, a system that I'm using three times a month that's called Menus for Business Communication. And you have various opportunities. Check the link. There's also a calendar where you can go and find out exactly when these are in your time zone. So you'll be able to come. But we talk about a specific topic every month. So this month, it happens to be team collaboration. We come in and we look at an appetizer. You can imagine if it's food, if it's thermopolium, then it has to be food. <laughs> so you have an appetizer. That's a quick 
20 minute call, just get a feeling for what's going on. Then we have the main course the following week, 40 minutes, really sit down, really check and see how do we actually look at team collaboration and what can we doing, be doing and telling each other to help each other have better collaborative teams. And the third day is dessert. Again, it's only 20 minutes, it's very short. We put everything together and we talk about the actions. What are you going to take with you now and at the end and do those things in your own situation? And then the next day I send out an email where you can access PDFs that talk about everything from all the groups in case you've missed a day or you weren't able to attend, you get a summary of everything that was going on. So that's another option that everybody can come and try out. Terrific. And and I might add to that uh, your LinkedIn profile. Um, mm -hmm. And and in the interim, while you're in the in the process of switching websites, mm -hmm. um, certainly in the U.S., uh, there's there's quite a bit of of um, I don't want to say dependency, but it's it's a great place to go because you're producing a lot of free content. Um, which is something that, that we haven't discussed yet. And, and, and I really appreciate and in the, in the many, many meetings that we've been in together, I've seen you present two or two or three minute videos uh, and, and every single time I learn something. So um, where do they find, where do they find those videos? Is there a YouTube channel? Are you posting them all to LinkedIn, et cetera? The YouTube channel is also in process at the moment. The videos have all been uploaded, but it's not really structured yet, but they will be coming. But on the LinkedIn profile, you also find the link to the calendar for the what we call the Mibuko sessions, menus for business communication. You find the link to Penn site. So LinkedIn at the moment is sort of the hub for, for everything. And if you don't find it on there, then you just send me a message and I send you to the right place. So that's fine. And there's other content, and I know that there, you've got other content that you've posted directly on LinkedIn, at LinkedIn as well. And I'm and I'm um, a member of your newsletter, which has also been very very valuable. So, um, how how would somebody get get access to your newsletter? The minute you you talk to me and anything, and you connect with me on LinkedIn, we automatically feed you then into the newsletter. And if you decide you won't don't want to be in there, there's always the unsubscribe link, of course. But we think it's important because LinkedIn is the place for us where professionals really meet. And if we want to do something professional and we want to keep in touch, that I feel is the best place to do that just because everybody in the world has access. We all know about things that don't work, like websites that drop off or somebody doesn't have access to something or if it's something paid that certain systems can't be used in certain countries. Mm -hmm. I work globally. I've worked with people personally from more than 70 countries. Also before online started, I worked 30 years offline before I went online. So for me, having opportunities for a place where people can always go, LinkedIn is the thing that I less, I think the world starts turning. LinkedIn will always be there and everything else that you need should be linked inside the LinkedIn profile. Terrific. So, mm -hmm. so, so that brings up the last topic that I really wanted to kind of discuss because you've already touched on it, and that is that you're global. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you're you're not just operating within the United States or just Germany, where you're where you you currently reside. Are you a German citizen now, or you no? You're so you're an American citizen living in living in Germany. Um, can you tell me a little little bit yeah. about that story and and yeah. and and, and <laughs> And really, who you best serve seems to me to be somebody who is looking at multicultural type of business dealings and multicultural communications. But well, well, there's a couple of things. First of all, I've lived here permanently since 1983, and I've had my own business here since 1988. So that's a long time. 2019, I made the decision before the pandemic that I didn't want to be getting on airplanes and flying off to Australia and spending 26 hours to get there and work for three days and spend 26 hours coming back. So I decided to move online. It's been a wonderful challenge. I'm still working on it. That's why you folks at Video Socials are helping me so much with that part of it and lots of other people who are helping me as well. But for me, what I've realized over the years, that I could list all these wonderful countries where these people have come from. But the fact is that sometimes the biggest cultural problems are not in another country. They're on the same floor as you're on. You walk down the door, down the hall, three doors. And if you're an engineer and you go talk to somebody in the sales department, it's like this. 
two engineers from two different countries can feel so comfortable with each other because they speak engineer speak, you know, mm -hmm. they know about things, they make little pictures, they draw things, you know, it's great. They go and talk to a salesperson who's only looking at commissions, who's only looking at numbers, who probably from the engineer's point of view is sort of like a people pleaser. Well, the engineer wants to have the machine please, not, not the people please. So there's a whole different focus. And even if those two people grew up in the same town and now work in the same company and speak the same language, that doesn't mean they understand each other. Absolutely. So the idea of what I call geographical, so I'm American, but I live in Germany and you're American and you live in America and lots of other people I know are living wherever but are not originally from there the geography is one thing and that's really important because it does have a huge influence on who we are and what we do i'm not typical american anymore but i haven't lived in america for most of my life anymore so it's obvious that i'm not really fully american the other thing though are these organizational cultures mm. so when the doctor talks to the patient when the sales guy talks to the engineer, when somebody from finance is trying to explain to marketing why they can't just keep throwing money out the window all the time, you know, because they're both looking at something for the good of the company or the good of the client. For example, I have a wonderful story of a, a, an individual who came to me and said, Rhonda, you know, I've got two departments ahead of mine and then I'm in the middle and then there are two departments after mine. We all talk to the same client but the salespeople keep telling the guys at the client's office when I'm going to start doing the implementation and the delivery of the software, but he doesn't know what I'm doing and he doesn't ask me. He just goes and tells them things to make them happy. And when I come and say, no, 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 we're not starting next month, we're starting three months from now, then everybody gets upset and we have hostility within the company and we have a customer that's totally confused and doesn't know who to listen to. So I do sessions where I talk about, you have to get through the glass walls in a company before you can get through the glass ceiling. And this is really important for me because people always say there are silos in a company. I grew up on a farm. There are no silos in the company. If you were in a silo, you would know it. It's not a silo. You think you know what's going on. You know, lots of office buildings also have meetings room with glass walls and you first standing on the outside and you look inside and you think, oh, well, they're just having a meeting. Yeah, but it's not the same kind of meeting maybe that you would be having or they're talking about things in a different way. So you've got to get through the glass walls first or to use this wonderful thing. If you're inside the bottle, you can't read the label on the outside. You need that other perspective. And most people don't know how to look for that other perspective or don't understand why it's important. And when they talk to me, it's always, I always say, I'm an in-house idiot. You know, you're, you're talking about things that I don't understand. So explain it to me. I don't understand. Well, Rhonda, it's easy. I say, yeah, for you, it's easy, but explain it to me. If you can get, explain it to me, then you can explain it to everybody. All those funny people in the marketing department or the IT department or whoever else you need to talk to that doesn't ever understand, do it with me first. And that's why I call myself global, as you mentioned, strategic communication guide. I take you by the hand and we look at the things you need to do to be able to talk to other people in whatever culture better than you can now. And that's the whole point of the game. Awesome. So it's, it's basically learning that not everybody has the same ear that we all have our own not silos but our own our own uh, environments mm -hmm. even within a larger organization or company um, and within those environments we have our idiosyncrasies in language and in what's important to us etc and and i i love the example of the salesperson basically promising something from the engineering department that the engineering department never, never agreed to, to begin with, yeah. or was on a completely different track. And it just goes to show, and this happens all the time, all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so you're there to help them start to erase or get, at least get, at least get, uh, uh, you know, a glass on that glass wall, you know, so, so that they can listen in and, and as well as to learn how to communicate in a way that 
the person that you're trying to reach can understand, mm -hmm. not only from a standpoint of the words that you're saying, but what the intent is and, and all of it really coming back to realizing that you are on the same team. You are trying to accomplish something. And whether you're one company working with another company in two different countries that needs to be able to communicate because you've now partnered to do fulfill a contract or you've you've you're doing a training system or et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's so many nuances and so many communications gaps that it sounds like where you can really kind of step in and help fill in those gaps to identify them and to um, uh, and to educate them as to how and allow them to see where the where those gaps are and and how they can, and how they can actually create a true synergistic mm -hmm. um, and and valuable level of communication. So I've always said and 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 I'd like to close with this if I may and and that is is that you know what is life but a series of relationships. Mm -hmm. And if that's true what are relationships but a series of conversations. And so that's kind of been a guiding principle for me in that the fact that yes there's all there's all these things to do and all these things that we, you know, we need to eat, we need to sleep, we need to, you know, we need to, we need to generate income. We need to do, you know, lots of things. There's lots of do, but who we be with others and the relationships that we form and the communication that is required for that relationship to even exist in the first place. I mean, we're not going to marry somebody that they, they, we don't speak their language. They don't speak ours. We, you know, we, we have no, no means of communication, right? So there is no relationship. So relationship is dependent on, and what, you know, a business organization is a series of relationships. Mm -hmm. So all that being said comes back to, we need to be able to communicate and we need to be able to communicate effectively and, as you brought into your whisperation concept, uh, it is, yes, we all bring our own expertise and our own wisdom and knowledge, but it's communication that provides the bridge to inspiration, mm -hmm. which is where inspired work and inspired thought and inspired um, engagement happens moving forward. So Rhonda, thank you so much. Uh, delightful, delightful to have you today. Did you have anything in closing that you wanted to that you wanted to add? First of all, I wanted to thank you for this opportunity. This is, as always, a chance to share with people what it is that they've maybe been looking at for a long time. And the minute you hear it from two different people expressing the same thing in two different ways, that's often a huge help just to get our own heads organized. And I think the last point I would like to bring up is when you're in this communication, when you're in this relationship, when you're looking for this inspiration or you want to be using it, the other important thing is really good to be aware of expectations and how to manage expectations. Because a lot of what happens in the conversation is going on in our own minds before we even get into the room with whatever kind of walls, glass or otherwise. And before we even open our mouths and say anything, or even before we just sort of look over at somebody and you know have anything that's going on in the visual part, there's a lot going on up here. And if we don't take the time to understand our own expectations and to find out what's happening on the other side as well, then a lot of things get off track. So if you find it's not working the way it should, it may not be jargon. It may not be all these wonderful things that we've already mentioned. It could be what are you bringing with you before you even start the communication. And so managing expectations is something I work with a lot with people because they say, yeah, but you know, Rhonda, I just went there and I told the guy he has to do this and that. I said, are you allowed to tell him that? Can, should you be asking him that? Is that what he wants? Is that what you really want or is that somebody telling you that's what you want? How are you dealing with how that goes on in your mind before you ever express anything? So if anybody's still thinking about how do I say this, maybe it's about how do I think it first and then how do I say it? Maybe that's a help for people as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Terrific, Rhonda. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And again, folks, 
all of the links that Rhonda talked about and, and means and ways by which you can get further information about her through her and even and perhaps even uh, contact her uh, will be will be connected as well as those for inspiring business and for our services phoneblogger.net videosocials.net and videointerviewpodcast.com so thank you again and we'll see you next time on inspiring business <music>